By now, you may have buckets full of candy at your house, leftovers from Halloween. And while many enjoy trick or treating, others would rather take in a scary movie marathon, a haunted house, or just explore our own inner darkness. Fox 28 News reporter Eva Anderson takes us on a journey of things that go bump in the night. She examines the science of fear in a Fox 28 News special report. We all get scared sometimes, and there's something about this season that makes our fears a little more heightened, but the feeling itself is still somewhat mysterious. I sat down with an expert to explore what exactly fear is made of and why the same feeling that makes our stomach drop and our skin crawl is something that deep down we desire. Fear. The feeling is universal. It causes us to scream, run, panic. So why do we seek it out? I asked Dr. Daniel Trinnell. He's a neuropsychologist who has spent 40 years at the University of Iowa researching human emotion. There's a part to fear that activates reward pathways in the brain and makes it rewarding to, to you know, put yourself in a fearful situation. They do that on purpose. They pay, they pay money to do that. He's talking about the thousands who flock to haunted houses like Scream Acres each year. What, what makes you pay money to actually get scared? <laughs> My friends. <laughs> get some funny reactions. <laughs> and they did react. <laughs> but in the end, came out laughing. <laughs> Those... There were a lot of screams. Who was that? Mostly. It was me. Yeah, but... <laughs> they were following me. <laughs> but the rewarding part of fear that makes you smile and laugh can take a dark turn. We've seen uh, adults cry, you know, panic attack. We've had people wet their pants, yes. We've had a few other accidents, too, on the farm. <laughs> um, everyone kind of jokes that we should sell Depends in the gift shop. And just like people's reactions to fear are individual, so is a fear itself. A question I asked on Facebook yielded many different fears, ranging from fear of oceans to bad breath to busy nights at an understaffed restaurant. Dr. Trinnell says the recipe for your personal fear is a combination of their biology and their experiences. And biologically, he says, some fears are ingrained. There are basic things that almost all people are afraid of. You're sort of hardwired to be afraid of them. Snakes are a good example and spiders. In fact, a 2018 study by ADT Home Security says Iowans fear spiders the most. So I bought a tarantula. If I kept the fear securely locked in a cage, would people still be afraid? I'm going to a quarter of school and I'm gonna test that. I wanna show you something. <laughs> Now you can face this way. I, oh my God, no. <laughs> People panicked. A few even cried. But why? People sort of start with a base state of fear, and that's that's adaptive because they, you know, those things can be poisonous and can kill you. Other fears aren't so hardwired for protection. Some are based on a personally held belief, like the fear of God or fear of ghosts. Is it better for you to talk to us in the dark? Amanda Enos is a paranormal investigator. Despite going on missions to speak with spirits, she says they frighten her. Those spirits are going to harm you. They're going to scratch you. They're going to possess you. They're going to do whatever they want to you to make you leave. That genuinely makes me terrified. Some people might say, there's no such thing as ghosts. There's no such thing as paranormal. Why do you believe? I think the main difference between a believer like myself and a skeptic who doesn't believe is I've experienced it. Amanda says that when investigating at Monticello's Edinburgh Manor in 2017, spirits overcame her, causing her to forget 20 minutes of her evening. She said friends told her she was shouting, yelling, and not acting like herself. Do you believe you were possessed? I do believe I was jumped a little bit. Dr. Turnell said neuroscience doesn't completely have the answer to why some people believe in the paranormal and not others. But he did say some people's experiences build into a place where they're the on board with those things or on board enough to worry about them or be fearful about them or think there's something going on. So from spiders to spirits Ghosts. to spooks in haunted houses, fear is everywhere. But what if you had no fear? Dr. Trinnell spent years studying a woman who fit that exact description. She was essentially 
fearless. Do you have the amygdala about here? The part of her brain to detect fear was destroyed. We published, I don't know, 25 or 30 studies about that, case, that patient. They exposed her to snakes, spiders. They even flew her to what was supposed to be the most scary haunted house in the U.S. Just her her complete um, lack of a fear response in many different kinds of situations that would trigger massive fear in, in normal people um, was very fascinating. It's something we can only dream of, having no fear. Wouldn't we all want to be fearless? Science says no. I remember somebody asked me once about, uh, well, maybe you should have a, an army. Soldiers would have their amygdalas taken out so they could not have fear and they would be better in battle and so forth. And I, you know, I thought about that, but those people would end up putting themselves in harm's way. I mean, they need to be afraid. So as much as fear, well, scares us, we need it. That's a basic survival emotion yeah, that keeps us, you know, keeps us alive. As far as conquering your fears, Dr. Turnell says that's not a guarantee, but in many cases, a systematic desensitization like therapy can work. Eva Anderson, Fox 28 News. I just want to know where Eva got that terrific.